بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وبعد Respected brothers, elders, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah uh, Today inshallah we will cover a very important topic which impacts all of us and that is education, ilm, knowledge. I'm sure all of you have heard the term that the pen is more mightier than the sword. It's a well-known phrase. Is it right? I would say in most cases it is. Sometimes you do need the sword. But generally, the pen is more mightier than the sword because with the sword, you don't win the hearts. With the pen, you win the hearts. With the sword, you don't convince people. With the pen, you convince people. The victory with the sword is short term. The victory with the pen is long term. And this is why you see one of the meanings of fat victory in Islam is actually fat is to open. So the Muslims would bring an army to a certain area and then they would overtake that area. They would present them Islam. If they didn't accept Islam, then they would take that area. That would open the doors for the local people to see the beauty of Islam because that was the only way. Because the leaders and the kings of those times would never allow you to come and hand out leaflets outside their local temples. Our first revelation is what? Allah reveals in the Quran, Iqra. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of the one who created, subhanallah. Our first revelation is Iqra. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring the first revelation Iqra? What's the, what's the pillars of Islam? Salah, Hajj, Hajju, Sallu. None of that. The first revelation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed was Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of the one who created you. People at that time were using other human beings as animals, lower than animals. They were burying their own blood, their own daughters alive. They were at war for each other at times for over decades, but none of that was mentioned. Allah mentioned what? Iqra. Read. Why? Because see, sound knowledge will eradicate all evils in society. Will uproot all evils in society. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went for the foundation. You give people good knowledge, read in the one who created you. Meaning read that which is pure. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. And that will be a source of eradicating the illness and the sicknesses in society. You will no longer bury your daughters alive. You will no longer abuse your daughter-in-law. You will no longer disrespect your parents. You will no longer be disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if your fundamentals is sound knowledge. Otherwise, if it's not sound knowledge, you'll be dealing with the symptoms of not having sound knowledge. So this was the first revelation. And this is why you see, look, ilm, knowledge, pure knowledge. The first thing when a child is born is what? What do they say? They give adhan in one ear that the first thing that he hears is la ilaha illallah. That Allah is akbar. That come towards success. You give the ikama in the other ear. You know, not before, now it's changed a bit, but before, you know, what would they endeavor that the first word of the child would be? It would be Allah. 
Oh, it'll be la ilaha illallah. Now it's mama, papa, cartoon, this, that. But that was what it used to be. Even, even, you look at those who ha hardly have, who have very little knowledge in those countries that we come from, they still wanted their children to recite the first thing that would come out of their mouth would be the kalima, the shahada. La ilaha illallah. Or, or the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because what you are instilling in that child, because the Prophet sallallahu said, Kullu mawludin yu'ladu ala fitratil islam. That every child is born on the fitrah of Islam. He's born on the innate nature of Islam. He's like a clean slate. And then it is society which impacts him. The Prophet ﷺ said, then the parents, the parents, they make him a Jew, they make him a Christian, they make him a Magian, they make him something else, they make him an atheist, because the parents have a huge impact on the child. And what is, what is the Prophet ﷺ telling us? That the first madarsa of that child, when that child is pure, is the parents. If the parents fail, often, often that leads to the child failing. You look throughout the Qur'an, subhanAllah, look throughout the entire Qur'an. Literally every qawm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about that the Nabi came to, what did they say? They said, you know what we're on? Is what we found of our forefathers to be on. And therefore, we found our fathers to be mushriks. We found our fathers to bury the daughters alive. Therefore, we are doing exactly what we found our fathers doing. Literally, in every single case, the destruction of the children was because of the hands of the parents. Because the parents failed, because there wasn't sound knowledge, and there was no amal if they had any knowledge. And then you had a man, sallallahu alayhi wa who comes to this group of people, the vast majority of them could not read and write. Our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa was unlettered, could not read and write, to the degree that on Sul'u al-Hudaybiyyah, they finished the treaty of with Muhammad Rasulullah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turned to Ali Radiallahu Anhu and he said, Ali, finish it off with Muhammad Rasulullah. So Ali Radiallahu Anhu writes Muhammad Rasulullah. So Hail ibn Amr, who was, came on behalf of the Mushrikeen, he said, no, no, no. He said, Muhammad, if we had regarded you as a Nabi, as a Rasulullah, then we wouldn't have this issue. Delete the word Rasulullah, leave Muhammad, the son of Abdullah. So the Prophet sallallahu now turns to Ali radiallahu anhu and he says, Oh Ali, remove the word Rasulullah. So Ali radiallahu anhu says, Oh message of Allah. That's difficult for me. They may not regard you as a message of Allah, but I do. I can't do that. So then the Prophet sallallahu took the pen and he said, Ali, take my hand over the word Rasulullah. So Ali radiallahu held the hand of the Messenger of Allah and he took it over the word Rasulullah and the Prophet sallallahu erased the word Rasulullah. The Messenger of Allah was unlettered. But the first revelation which descended upon this man who was unlettered was Iqra. Come the battle of Badr. And these are not stories brothers and sisters, these are not stories. We implement these in our life because that's what changed the society which the Prophet sallallahu came to. So the Prophet sallallahu battle of Badr, the first battle that the Muslims had with the Mushrikeen. What was the ransom? Those who could not give the ransom, but could read and write, what was their ransom? Their ransom was that they would teach 10 people how to read and write and they would be freed. Subhanallah, these were people, look, these were people who came to kill the Muslims. The Messenger of Allah took them and utilized them to educate the Muslims. And how big was the classes? Ten. Not forty, not fifty like our maktabs. You know, the more you get into the maktabs, the cheaper it gets, the more the madrasa uh, uh, earns, and the parents don't care because the lower your fees are. 
So you have 40 in a madarsa, 30 in a madarsa. The Prophet sallallahu said, no, 10, only 10 per class, 10 per teacher. How long does it take you to teach them? As long as it takes you. There is no time limit. Ilm has no time limit. And this is what the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa did. And this is a G, why? Because this was a man who himself was unlettered. But he understood the importance of education. Brothers and sisters, no, many of us are old, we've, we've missed the boat. But you do have an obligation to your children. That you give them good sound education. You, you make them aspire at schools. You make them aspire at maktabs. You make them deen dar. You know, why do most maktabs fail? Why do most maktabs fail? There's a few reasons. But let me address with a, a reason which is directly connected to you and I. So you have three people in, in a maktab. And why do, why do I say that the maktab fail to a degree? It's because we are the only population, only population in the entire country who after school, our children go for two hours to a maktab for five to six years. No other community has that, alhamdulillah. But why do they fail? Why after six, seven years of studying Islam, we are 4% of the country, but we are 15% in prisons? Why? Firstly, the maktabs are not adequate. The teachers are not trained to the degree that they should be trained. And one of the reasons is that because you and I are not ready to pay enough for that maktab. You want to pay minimal and then you want the resources of your schools. You want to organize like your school and then you complain, oh, but at my school, they send me a letter as soon as anything happens and you're paying four, five, six pound a week. That's one. The second part is the children. I don't want to speak about the children because the children are generally the victims. And the third is the parent, which is generally you. Whatever they do at Makdam, they teach their children 40 duas. Over a period of years, they teach them 40 duas. The child reads the Quran and he reads the Quran with the Jweet. And never has he ever heard his mum and dad ever read dua before they eat. Because you don't know the dua. The best you know is Bismillah. For everything Bismillah. Out of the house Bismillah, inside the house Bismillah, eating Bismillah. After you finish Bismillah, when you burp Bismillah. When you, when you, ride a, when you drive your car Bismillah. You, your, your mashallah, which is good, alhamdulillah, better than nothing, alhamdulillah. But that's where, as far as it goes. So there's 40 duas that child has learnt over those years. He's forgot them all because never has he heard his parents read one dua. So all the effort, all the minute of the teachers at the maktab is wasted at whose hands? Your and I. So, we, we, cause the children to be victims. If you don't know your du'as, learn your du'as. You can learn everything else, learn your du'as for eating. When you sit in the car, learn your du'a, and then make your children read it every single time they sit. After they finish the food, make the child read the du'a. Learn them if you don't know them. Because this is what is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know what keeps people in the deen? Let me tell you. It's been proven because there's a huge, in the West there's a huge issue with atheism and, and agnosticism. You know what keeps the people in dua? It's not delil. Remember this. It's not that you can break down, you've got the cosmopolitan, uh, uh, cosmological argument 
for why Allah exists. You know what is proven? It's because of experience of the religion. If you never experience the sweetness of Iman, if your children have never experienced the sweetness of Iman, that you've never given them an Islamic nice environment where they feel Islam, where they experience Islam, then they have nothing to go back on. So one doubt is created regarding their Iman and everything is gone, whitewashed. So brothers, make an environment. You have to think about everything else in our life. We think how oh, we can do it better. What about the future of our children? The education of our children? You look at a man like Umar ibn Khattab. You know, Umar, you know the vast majority of people at that time could not read and write. But Umar radiallahu anhu could read and write. So where did Umar radiallahu anhu go? Umar radiallahu anhu now goes where? To go and kill the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The worst of people, the worst of people are those who kill a Nabi or are killed by a Nabi. You don't get worse than this. So he goes out and, and he goes with the intention to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And on the way he's directed to his sister's house, Fatima, who had embraced Islam. And he hears a humming noise when he's at the door. And he's not 100% sure what it is. So they've been taught how to read the Quran. So he goes into the home. And the teacher hides. And he said, what was that noise that I heard? They said, no, it's nothing. I mean, what did you hear? He says, nothing. And then he said to them, I heard that you are Muslims. Firstly, they kind of denied it. Then the brother-in-law said to him, he said, Oh, Umar, what if the religion of our forefathers is wrong and the religion of Muhammad is right? Umar was Umar, you know, he, where was he going? He was going to kill the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa So he grabbed his brother-in-law and he started beating his brother-in-law. He grabbed him and he was beating him, sitting on him and beating him. His sister moved forward and he slapped his sister. And then she started to bleed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the heart of Umar ibn Khattab. And Umar said, what was that what you were reading? What was that what you were reading? And they said it was the Quran of Umar and we ain't giving it to you until you go and have a bath. So Umar anhu goes and has a bath and then he comes and they give him a papers with, with Surah Taha on it. And it started off with Bismillah rahman rahim And the Arabs had no concept of Bismillah rahman rahim They had Allahumma Bismika. Bismika Allahumma. That's what they had. That's it. So Umar pick, reads that word Bismillah rahman rahim and he gets angry and he throws it to the floor. And then he picks it up again and he starts reading. And the narrations mention, the more he read, the more Allah opened his heart. The more Allah opened his heart. The man who went to go and kill the Prophet wasallam now leaves his sister's house and says, where is the message of Allah? And they say, the message of Allah is in Dar Nadwa. So he Darul Arqam. So he goes to Darul Arqam, which is at the foot of where the mountain of Safa is now. And he goes there and they see him, and the vast majority of Muslims had migrated to Abyssinia. There's only a handful of Muslims left. So they got scared. This was Umar ibn Khattab. He's got his sword with him. So Hamza radiallahu anhu was there, and Hamza said, Let him come. If he wants khair, alhamdulillah, if he doesn't want khair, we'll kill him with his own sword. So Umar radiallahu anhu knocks on the door. And he, and he walks in and they grab him by the arm from both sides. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam moved forward and he grabs him by his garment. And the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Umar, when will you come right? When will you come right? Only after destruction forged you like it fell, Walid ibn Maghira. And Umar radiallahu anhu fell to his knees. And he said, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Wa annaka rasulullah. Wa annaka rasulullah. He said, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And that you are the messenger of Allah. Oh 
Umar because of the barakah that he could read and write. So the nur and the beauty of Islam. Allah says, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Know, know that there is no God besides Allah. فَعْلَمْ Have knowledge. You cannot recognize Allah if you do not have knowledge. Before you can even become a Muslim, before you can even become a man of a person of Iman, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Know that there is no God besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why, brothers, very important that we educate our children, but we educate them however we educate them. That education has an Islamic dimension to it. If you make them doctors, be con they should be conscious of the fact that what they are doing is ultimately they are serving creation and serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Ghazali says that people cannot really appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless they know the anatomy of a person. Because if you know the anatomy of a person, then that, and you know how complex the anatomy of a person is, that will increase your iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even if you are studying medicine, and you marvel at the human being, and it brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of the one who created. And therefore brothers, we need to invest in our children. Give them a good education though they are achievers. You know, a research came out recently which said, Muslims of all religious denominations, even non-religious denominations, the lowest achievers in secondary education, in, in, upper, in university education are the Muslims. In attaining a higher degree. So in attaining a first or an upper to one, the Muslims are the lowest. The average is 76%. The Muslims is 65%. And there's a number of reasons for this. Background, other reasons. But there's also one reason that the report mentions. That they're discriminated against. So they saw... Any university which had a reasonable amount of Muslim staff, the Muslims achieved higher. Where they had very little Muslim staff, the Muslims achieved lower. So they say one of the reasons for this is that the Muslims are discriminated against. So brothers, the only people who are going to have to be a notch above Everybody else is you and I just to get a fair playing field. So we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people who really appreciate ilm which brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our children pious. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our children our future, our source of sadaqah jariya. That they contribute and they become an asset to the um, ummah. بارك الله فيكم جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله